and welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. And on my continuing series of making the move from Windows 10 to Linux Mint, today I'm going to talk about something that we use every day but we really don't think about. Now, if you've not seen my original episode on how to install VirtualBox on either your Windows 10 machine or your Mac, be sure to watch that. I'll leave it in the descriptions below or I'll leave a card up here somewhere. And once you've already done that, let's go ahead and start your VirtualBox and go ahead and fire up your Linux Mint installation, which I've already done right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen. Okay, now we are in our virtual machine. So what I wanted to talk about today is this thing down here. This is actually called the panel. And you know, if you're using Windows 10 or Windows, you're used to this panel at the bottom. If you use uh, a Mac, you're mostly used to it being on top. Okay, now with Linux Mint, it gives you a lot of customization. So you could make Linux Mint your own, you know, it could look completely different from anybody else's version of Linux Mint, which is great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new panel. Okay, so all you do by doing that is just right click your mouse, put your mouse cursor over the panel, right click your mouse, modify panel, and then add a panel. Okay, now in Linux Mint by default, you could either add a panel on the top or on the bottom. Since we already have one on the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and add it on the top. So just click this area that's highlighted. And there you go, you have a new panel. Now, before I start working on this panel, it might be confusing to have two panels at the same time. So I'm going to auto hide this one down here. Okay. So how you do that is right click on your mouse on the panel, go to panel settings. And the very first one that comes up, see, it shows two panels. Previous, next, like next would be this new panel you just added. See, it's highlighted. Go to the previous panel. Now, see, it's highlighted. I'm going to go auto hide. Okay. And now it's gone. Or it's actually hidden. See, so you put your mouse over, it comes back up. Okay. So, let's go ahead and start working on this brand new panel. So, the first thing you want to add is some type of menu to access all your programs and settings. So you go over to the panel, right click on your mouse, add applets to the panel. And applets are basically all the stuff that's on your panel, okay? And as you see, there's quite a bit of applets that you can add. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the ones that I use and also the ones that I think are important. Obviously, the most important one is the menu, you know, so you're going to go ahead and click on it. Add to panel. Okay. And there it is, you know, and every time you add a new applet, it'll always add it to the rightmost. And I'm going to show you how to move things around. Okay. And I'll explain each one of the applets. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to add is a Windows list. Okay. And what a Windows list is, you know, whenever you open up something, it shows up on the bottom. That's what a Windows list is. So I'm going to add that to the panel. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is something that I could use to access my applications quicker, like a shortcut menu. So that would be up here panel launchers. Okay, so highlight that, add to panel. Okay, so there you could quickly access programs that you use not regularly. Okay, another thing I like is some type of network notifications. So you know if you're on a Wi Fi or whatever network that you hooked up to, that's important. Go ahead and add that. Okay. And another thing that people like having is some type of trash bin. Go ahead and add that. Okay. And also sound. Well, if you already have a, this particular applet in another panel, like right here, it won't give you that option to add it. Okay. But you get the idea. So I didn't want to remove this and then add it up here. So, but you get the idea. Okay. Another thing I like is show desktop. 
And if you have multiple users on your particular machine, go ahead and add that as well. So this will quickly allow you to switch between users. And another thing that might be useful is uh, power management. And I already have it down here, but that basically tells you how much power you have left. Okay, so you could add that as well. And also the removable drives. So if you were to put in a USB stick or external drive, it's nice to have a little icon down there. Okay, and it'll only show up once you hook in an uh, external device or drive. Okay. Another thing I think nearly everybody likes is some type of calendar that shows the time and date. So go ahead and add that. And you could modify how this particular calendar looks. So I might go over that near the end. Okay. And then another thing that I'm going to show you that I don't think most people are familiar with unless you use Win like Mac. You know, you could do it on Windows too if I, if I remember correctly. But basically it's a workspace. Okay. It's a workspace switcher. And you see what I mean. Okay. Okay. And... Let me see if I missed anything else. User trash. Okay. Oh, there's one that I use. I think it's very useful. Is the on-screen keyboard. We'll go ahead and add that to panel. There it is, on-screen keyboard. Okay. So we're pretty much done adding all of our applets. You know, you could explore and add any other ones that you like, but these are the ones that I'm going to talk about. So the first thing you'll notice is everything's kind of like all jumbled in on the right. You know, you want to organize it the way you like it. Most people like the menus and stuff all the way over here. So how you move things around is you right click on your mouse. Panel edit mode, be sure to turn that on. Okay, now it's on. And you've noticed like the, there's highlighted colors, okay. So let's go ahead and move this over to the left. Okay. So that should be to the left. There it is. And I also like my applications to the left as well. So I'm going to move that to the left. Oops. Let me try that again. Okay. Okay. And let's see my networking, my time. I like it to be on the furthest right most. Okay. I don't like to get in the way of all this other stuff. So I'm going to put it right there. Okay. And then the show desktop, I like that to be over here as well. And this is my own preference. You could set it however you like. Okay. And, you know, sometimes you have to play around with it because um, sometimes it gets stuck, especially if you have a lot of stuff that you're moving around. Okay. So, and my trash. I'll move that to the right as well. It's not something that I access a lot. Okay. And let me move the time all the way to the right. Yeah. Okay. And your networking, I'll just leave it there. Okay. So I think everything's the way I want it. Once you're done, you right click on your mouse again. Panel edit off. Okay. Now that it's off, now when you click on these applets, they'll actually work. Whenever you have panel edit mode on, you really can't click on the applets because you're moving it around. So if you test it, see, there's your menu. Works. Let's go ahead and open our folder. This will go to your main folder. Make sure that the application switcher works. See, there it is. It's right there. Works. And, you know, I like it to the left most. And, you know, with the application switcher, the works, the, you can't tell where it's at until you open something. So let me move that around real quick. Let me panel edit mode on. I like it to be in the left most. Okay. So let's go ahead and move it right there. Yeah, I like it right there. So panel edit mode off again. Okay. So let's open up two things. Let's open up this Firefox as well. And it might take a second because I'm in a virtual machine, so everything takes a little longer on my computer. But the whole idea is, you know, all your applications you could switch at right here, which would 
make sense. So there it is. It's right there. And for some reason, this shows back up. I'm not sure why, but it's odd. But anyway, let's just focus on the panel on top. So you see it right there. So good. That works the way I want it. Let me go ahead and close that. And now, um, if you wanted to add more applications here to your particular panel, all you do is open your menu. So you go to the programs that you want to add. Like, let's just say I want to add GIMP down there. Okay, you choose the application you want. You right click on your mouse, add to panel. And unfortunately, to add it to this one, that's not what I wanted, but it should have added it to that one. Okay, but you get the idea. Okay, so let me talk about this other stuff. Okay, this is important. This is called a workspace switcher. Okay, so in Linux, and you've been used to this if you use Apple, but Linux has had this for a long time. You have multiple workspaces. Okay, so if I opened up something here, this is a different workspace. See? So I have, this is workspace two. See, workspace one, I don't have that open. Let's see. And it even mimics it. You see it on the different workspaces. See, I could add another one right here as well. So just think of it as like having multiple monitors. Okay. So, which is really cool. And, you know, depending on how many screens you want just think about it as having you know more than one monitor and in some cases if your computer is powerful enough think of it as having multiple computers because you could run a lot of stuff in these different workspaces okay but uh, my virtual my computer is not that powerful so I can't have too many things open so that's nice to have and let me add another one um, another applet that will show you how you can use this multiple workspace switcher you know, in, in a very, I guess, more efficient way. Okay. So, you know, sometimes you don't want to click back and forth uh, between this one and that one. Okay. Sometimes it's kind of cumbersome. Okay. So if you want to quickly move through all your applications and windows through each workspace, you could add an additional applet. Uh, uh, like a, basically it's like a, a master workspace switcher. So you add the applets to the panel. And there should be one at the bottom once it comes up. Okay. So it's called the Windows Quick List. Okay. This will allow you to access all your panels in one little applet. So I'm going to add that. And you see it down here. Okay. So see, this allows you to access all your applications in multiple workspaces in one spot. That is really convenient, okay? And the last applet that I like is, uh, this is primarily a cosmetic thing. Like I like changing my backgrounds. So I'm gonna add one that will allow me to change my background quickly without you know, having me go into the display settings all the time. And this is just a cosmetic thing. It doesn't really uh, improve the overall music experience. So what it is, is it's called a screen slideshow controls. Okay. Go ahead and add that. And there it is. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to uh, quickly change the desktop background. So if you right click on your mouse, see, you could change backgrounds. I'm not going to do it here because this virtual machine is slow. Or you could turn on the slideshow and it'll randomly choose different backgrounds. So that is the main points of all the panel that you have. It's really powerful. It's something that we don't think about, but it really allows you to customize your actual user experience. Okay. Now, one thing that I wanted to talk about, and I've done this before, okay? What if you accidentally deleted a panel and then you have no panels left? Okay, that could be a big problem. So I'm going to show you that really quick because I've done it before and it took me a while to figure out how to get it back. But this is the way that I know how to do it. So let me go ahead and clear this and remove this one, okay? 
And what Linux Mint does, it remembers your settings for each panel. So even if you deleted this one and you added a new panel, it'll remember all the settings. But I want to clear everything out. So if I do add a new panel, it'll be completely clear. So I'm going to modify panel, clear all applets. It's going to ask me, yes, do you want to do that? I say yes. And when you right click, all you have to do is go to modify, click it, remove panel. Okay, so now it's gone. So what if you accidentally deleted all your panels, okay? So if you were to do that right here, say right click, modify, remove panel. So you now you notice I have no panel. I don't have a way of accessing my programs or anything, okay? This could... This could be pretty scary, you know, especially if you're like learning it. And so this happened to me. And the easiest way that I know how to get it back is you right click on your mouse. Change your desktop background. OK. And that might not sound like that's the correct place to go, but it allows you to access your settings. And so when this comes up, you just click on this arrow back here. And it'll go to all your system settings which is real real nice okay so all you have to do is scroll down and then you will see panel click on panel and it'll bring up the familiar panel settings just go ahead and add new panel select the position as usual and your panel should be back see there it is and that is a uh, all you have to do to get your panel back And um, that is it for this particular episode. So hopefully you learn how to modify the panels, add a new panel, and it made you not only more familiar, but also more comfortable in making changes. Because as you're using Linux Mint or just Linux in general, you're going to realize that you could change pretty much everything. You know, even if you are really good at programming, you could even change how Linux works at the core level if you wanted to. So Linux gives you a lot of flexibility if you want to spend the time to do that. So if you got a lot of value out of this particular episode, be sure to leave a like. And if you had any comments and ideas, leave them in the description below. And as always, I am on Snapchat at Geek Outdoors. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out this episode. And as always, if you like these videos, be sure to click on the subscribe button. And for full written content, audio content, and additional geek stuff, head over to geekoutdoors.com. And I'll see you outdoors on the very next episode.